Good evening. And this is Pastor Grace Singh with Kingdom Faith Church. Thank you for joining me tonight in tonight's Bible study. It's uh, 8 o'clock Central Standard Time, so we're ready to begin. And I'm so glad you are joining me at this moment. And um, tonight I want to talk to you about righteous indignation. And before I proceed, I want to open up with a prayer. Please join me. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, Lord, for all your marvelous wonders. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are so merciful and gracious. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that as everyone that is tuning in to hear this Bible study, that you will send a blessing to them, Father, for being faithful to what they're feeling in their hearts, Father. Lord, I ask, Father, that you multiply the blessings to them, Lord. And I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you touch their hearts tonight. So, Father, I ask, Father, that you bring revelation to their spirit as I teach this word. I ask that you bring an understanding to your righteous indignation, Father. And Lord, I just thank you, Father, that you are with me and with them as we study this together tonight. And Father, I just speak a release of your Holy Spirit upon the whole teaching. So Father, I bless you again, Father. And we say thank you, Lord, for being with us in the name of Jesus. And everybody says, Amen, amen. Well, thank you for joining me tonight. You know, tonight I'm going to teach on the righteous indignation. And we all kind of have a sense of what righteous, righteous indignation is, but do we really understand what it is to have it? And, and you know, there's some, there could be a misconception about the word itself, but we'll see. If you, if you have your Bibles or you have another, um, uh, a device, electronic device that you can join in with any Bible app, please do so, all right? So let's study this together. You know, we can for sure know that our indignation is righteous when it is directed towards what angers God himself. Righteous anger and indignation is an inner feeling of a holy anger. It's felt in our hearts and it's an expression when we witness sin. You know, I remember when I first felt this, um, you know, I, you know, in the Bible we read that, you know, God got angry and so forth and God is, is upset with the Israelites and, you know, we hear about God's wrath, but, and I know that as we are to become more like him, we're supposed to have, we're supposed to be holy in him. And I know that as we grow as Christians, that we begin to renew our mind as we're growing, renew our mind. And then as we are walking with the Lord, I, I like to tell you that you will also begin to experience his righteous indignation. And for example, when I first felt it, it was several years ago, I saw an act that I was, um, I, that I witnessed. And this anger rose up in me and it was a holy indignation because of the sin that was being committed and I did not get mad at the person I was not mad at them I was mad at the sin that was being committed the act itself now when I experienced that I thought like wow you know like what was that because it was the first time I had experienced it and um, I was angry. I was angry because I saw and the sin through the eyes of God. I was angry because I witnessed something and the Christ in me rose up in anger. It rose up in and 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 an offense in me that is godly. And I was so surprised about that. I was like, wow. And I was really I, I got upset and I I shared that with my husband and he said that's uh, righteous indignation you know because of Christ in you and when you saw that sin happening that the Christ in you rose up against that sin and I was like wow I have never experienced this so that's the best way I can describe it to you so anyway so righteous indignation it's it's well it's also known as anger grumpiness it's a um, it's to display 
like an, a face, you know, when you get angry, you make faces uh, of dis, disgust or uh, faces of anger. And it's an indignation, a, a rage, or it's a wrath, you know, a divine chastisement, you know, that we experience during this time. So righteous indignation is when the Christ in you rises up against the sin that has been displayed in front of you that you witness, and the Christ in you rises up in righteous indignation. So... So, however, this, this righteous indignation is a, a typical uh, reaction. It's a typical emotion of anger that, that we express towards mistreatment, towards insult, or towards malice towards another person. It's, an, it's uh, towards murder. It's to anything that is a sin in the eyes of God. That is righteous indignation, you know, and um, it's I can I guess you can say it's a sense of uh, injustice, a sense of injustice, and um, you know the Christ in us wants to see things more holy, more righteous, because that's what God is. So in some Christian doctrines, you know, uh, righteous anger is considered the only form of anger that that is not a sinful that is not sinful because you can get angry but don't stay angry because it's something that rises up from in you that is the Christ in you that gets upset about the sin that has been committed and it's a righteous indignation because of the Christ in you we are not as we grow in our walk with Christ we be, as we begin to renew our mind in Christ as the word says we begin to think as Christ, and then we rise up in the righteous indignation against sin. Not against the person, not against the individual, but against the actual act of sin, because it is against God and what God sees as sin. So it says, for example, it's when Jesus drove the money lenders out of the temple. You can see that in the Gospel of Matthew 21. And you can read that story where uh, Jesus got upset. That was an example of righteous indignation, and uh, and you can see, that's a good story to read, amen. And so it's a, that's a, it's in the Gospels. Um, it is in Matthew twenty one. So what is what are things that God hates? You know, we can say, well, God, you know, He's pure and holy. He is. He is holy. Nothing unpure can be in front of him, you know, because darkness cannot be with the light and the light cannot be where the darkness is. That's why the Bible says you can either worship God or worship money. You cannot have both. You know, it's one or the other. So you're either for God or against God. As simple as that. Now, God, there's some things that God hates. And I'm not going to get into a lot of discussion. I want to make this simple for you. I want you to understand what I'm, the point that I'm trying to cross to you is that as you walk with Christ throughout the years, you're supposed to develop a righteous indignation because as we renew our minds in Christ Jesus, as we grow in our relationship with God, those things that God hates, eventually you should too. You should not be able to put up with any offense that comes against the kingdom of God. For example, some good examples will be towards the anger, towards any physical abuse, child abuse, porn, racism, homosexuality activity, abortions, and any other activity that God hates, that is sin, that is uh, more to the dark side than in the light. Amen? In Proverbs, it mentions several things that God hates, and it's all in the attributes of human behavior. You know, God made us in his image, but he also gave us free will. And through the perversion of free will that men have abused, instead of keeping their eyes on God, they began to focus on themselves and became selfish. And they became to indulge in the lust of sin to satisfy their desires. And that's where sin comes when it's something that is that you are lusting for something that you want to satisfy within yourself in other words it's a selfish act that you want to do and it's against something most of the, most of the times it's against what god sees as sin you know because our flesh our mind is enmity against god the flesh will you can never 
satisfy. You can never gratify God in the flesh, only in the spirit. Because enmity, the mind is enmity against God. Amen? So in Proverbs, it mentions several things that God hates. It's, and I mentioned that it's all attributes of human behavior. Human beha behavior. You know, sometimes we can be so selfish. We can be, uh, you know, functioning so much from the soul that we totally dis uh, dissatisfy God. And, and, and God gets angry at his people. That's what happened in the Old Testament. You know, God was trying to get his people to seek his face. He was trying to get people to, to go to him for for everything, but people were so selfish. They were just complaining and murmuring. And for example, the story of Moses, when he delivers them out of Egypt, the Israelites, you know, all they did was complain. So what happened? God in his, in his anger, he said, you know what? All these old people, all the older people, they're not gonna enter into the promised land. He goes, I'm gonna start with their children. And you know what, parents? This is a word of warning from the Lord God that if parents do not get their act together and begin to show a righteous indignation and bright behavior and teach the, morals, the moral values of God, you know, our kids will go astray and they will learn improper values, immoral uh, behavior, and they will be acting just as any other uh, Christian in the past the history where they indulge in their sinful lust and they forget about God. You see, that's what get, God really gets upset about is that we forget about him. And in his righteous indignation, he brings judgment to his people. You see, America, you are slacking in the Christian morals. You are leaving everything behind. You are taking the you have taken the Bibles out of the classroom. You are trying to take out everything from Christmas. You know, and we can no longer say Merry Christmas because it's an offense to you heathens, to the sinners of this world, to the non-believers. You know, God is your creator. God made you in his image. Repent in Jesus' name because we need to walk in the ways of the Lord so that we can be blessed as a country and, and prosper as a nation. And, and we don't want other countries coming to our nation and bombing the bombing us out of this uh, out of sight okay because you know if God is known to bring judgment to countries that totally live God out that have rejected the God and that's a holy indignation that God has it's like once he gets to the point where he says enough is enough then God brings judgment in and I don't want America to do that. I don't want America to suffer. I live in America. I don't want my children and my grandchildren to suffer and through judgment because of the moral values of the people. They've forgotten God. They're forgetting and they're just living to satisfy their lustful sin that is in their hearts. We don't want that. America, repent right now in the name of Jesus. Get your act together, people, because one day God is going to judge America. And I would hate that we are still alive, but if we are not, then our children and their children will still be alive, and they will suffer the 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 circum the they will suffer for the sins of the parents of the fathers. We don't want that to happen. Proverbs and Proverbs six verse sixteen verse nineteen. So if you have your Bible with you, please turn to Proverbs six verse sixteen through nineteen. Amen. It says, there are six things the Lord hates. Wow, six things the Lord hates. Seven that are detestable to him. Ooh, detestable to him. And, and I mentioned earlier that these are attributes in the human behavior. And I see this so, 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 so much. And I'm sure you do too. Because we, we go to work, we hear yappity yap, yappity yap, yappity yap. You know, where people are so uh, involved into gossip and criticism and negativity. And that is dissatisfying to God our Father. Amen. So there are seven that are detestable to him. Haughty eyes. Arrogant, it's an arrogant, superior, and condescending attitude. Wow. A lying tongue. How many times have people lied to your face and you know they're lying? 
and boy and some of them even practice a lie every day they're what you call habitual liars they practice a lie and practice a lie every day it's a lie. something is a lie a lying tongue god hates that it's detestable to him hands that shed innocent blood murder when you kill somebody that is innocent and that is something he hates because you have taken another life that god created a heart that devises wicked schemes oh my god i have seen that so 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 much you know where people in my past employments they devise wicked schemes to hurt somebody else and uh, i'm sure to an extent some of you have witnessed that in your own place of employment uh, feet that are quick to rush into evil oh man when it's something's going on a fight or something like that, people rush to see what's going on and to participate in whatever uh, ordeal is happening a false witness who pours out lies and a person who stirs up conflict in the community boy we can say that we have witnessed all that we have witnessed everything under the sky under the sky we have witnessed everything Whew, I'm getting tired just talking about that. You know, we have to evaluate ourselves. We have to judge ourselves and say, do I get mad when I see sin happening? You see, God is a conservative. I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to say God is conservative. He has moral values. He is holy. He is righteous. He's not for liberty and liberal behavior, you know. He's not. And Psalms 97. Okay, let's turn to Psalms 97. Psalms 97, verse 10 through 12. It says, let those who love the Lord hate evil. Do you hate evil today? Are you hating what is happening out there in the, in the USA? Are you hating that there's all kinds of stuff going on? You know, with the, well, I was going to mention some things, but I'm not going to say names of organizations or anything like that. But we have to be careful that we do not get caught up in the things and the sins of this world because people, you know, people have left their, their first love. Many people have rejected God Almighty. So we have to be careful that we do not love evil. Mm -mm -mm. No, sir. No, ma'am, do not love evil. We're supposed to be against abortion. We're supposed to be against uh, uh, the homosexuality. We're supposed to be against murder. We're supposed to be against abortion. We're supposed to be against all these things that God distresses and improper uh, behavior with our co-workers and, and our people around us. So, so, so let those that love the Lord hate evil. Let me read the rest of the scripture. For he guards the lives of his faithful ones and delivers them from the hand of the wicked. Let shine, light shines on the righteous and joy on the upright in the heart. Rejoice in the Lord, you who are righteous, and praise his holy name. You see, I put on my Facebook post that I canceled my Netflix subscription. You know, I thought about it, like, should I put it on Facebook or not? I said, you know what, I'm going to put it on there because I'm standing for righteousness. I've had Netflix for a while, but every movie that I want to see that, because I like action movies and I like suspense and I, you know, I, I like some, well, I don't like to see scary movies because those really affect me. I don't want to see nothing scary. I hate to see movies that there's massacre. Uh, it terrorizes me because you know why? Because it can happen. A spirit can move in a person and they can terrorize and massacre people. And we see that happening in America ever so often where somebody goes in a, a random gun shootout and they kill innocent people. You see, those things that can happen, they're, they're real. So I don't like to see movies like that. But I like to see a good action movie where there's a lot of car chasing and things like that. I don't mind. But now I can't even see a good, decent action movie without them starting off with a homosexual sin, either lesbian or homosexuals, uh, men. And I get upset because as a Christian, I cannot express my Christian beliefs to people or, or anything like that. Supposedly, we're not supposed to say, you know, anything because it's considered hate speech. But if we can't do things like that, why 
Are they supposed to do that? Why can they do that? I don't accept that. I refuse to accept that. And so I canceled my subscription. And, I said, and they said, they wanted to know why I put other. And I said, too many homosexual sins. Simple as that. And I'll cancel my other subscriptions if I have to. But so far, some of them have pretty good movies that I can see with that homosexual activity in it. You see, there's a time in our lives that we have to make a decision of what we accept. And I might tell you this, as a child of God, our, we are supposed to be renewing our mind in Christ. Therefore, we are supposed to be experiencing holy indignation. Therefore, we are supposed to be on the side of God and holy values. Amen. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? You know, there has to be a time in your life that something gets to you. If, and, and if you don't care and if nothing bothers you, then you don't care. It doesn't, you know, as long as it doesn't affect you, you don't care. But that's the wrong mentality. We need to think, does this affect the kingdom of God? And if it does affect the kingdom of God, then we need to repent and change the way we think and continue to follow his righteousness. Amen. So then, um, you know, the, the Apostle Paul gives a clear warning to those who anger God, you know, uh, in Galatians 5, Galatians 5, 19 through 21. It says, now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurities, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like this. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not enter the kingdom of God. Wow. <laughs> It's so simple. It's, it tells you right there. Those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Wow. And we are, are all of us that are watching this video, we're all trying to go to the kingdom of God. That's our destination as a child of God, as a believer. Our destination is eternity with the Heavenly Father if we have Christ Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Amen. So the Apostle Paul said it in Galatians 5.19. If you have your Bibles with you, I want you to turn there and read it. You know, Galatians 5, 19 through 21. I, you know, I'm not making this up. It's in the Word. It's in the Bible. So get your Bible and open it up. Amen? Or use your iPad or your cell device, you know, and get your Bible app and check it out, you know. And, um, uh, and Jesus, you know, he would get angry. He expressed righteous anger over the, sin, uh, over the sins of the people. You know, examples when Jesus got angry and he displayed righteous indignation. You know, we can refer to Mark 3, verse 1 through 5. And this is an NIV reading. Another time Jesus went into the synagogue and a man with a shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. You know, the traditional Jews still practice the Sabbath because they don't believe that Jesus is the Son of God. So they still practice the Sabbath. You know, but Jesus is even Lord over the Sabbath, and now we rest in Jesus. We don't have to take the Sabbath. But also, you know, if somebody is doing it, we don't judge them. It's up to them if they want to practice the Sabbath. We don't hold it against them or judge them either way. Amen? It's up to them. So, so anyway, some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus. As they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath, Jesus said to the man with the shriveled hand, Stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked him, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they remained silent. He looked around them in, in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts and said to the man, Stretch out your hand. And he stretched it out and his hands were completely healed. You see, they were completely restored. 
when you're trying to do good, there's always going to be somebody opposing. There's always going to be somebody offended. There's always going to be somebody waiting to judge you. There's always going to be somebody to, ready to accuse you when you're trying to do good. You know what? Let them. Let them. Let them do that. You know, you just do what God is telling you in, in your heart that he has spoken into your spirit to do. Amen. It is who shall we obey, man or God? Amen. So Matthew 21 verse 12 through 13. I'm using the English standard, standard version here. And, and Jesus cleanses the temple, okay? This is when Jesus cleansing, clean, uh, cleanses the temple. And Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who sold and bought in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who, were, who sold pigeons. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer, but you make it a den of thieves. Or, or robbers wow can you just imagine that happening hey man we see it in the in christian movies when they do that when they show it but sometimes we might not think nothing of it but it was a holy indignation that jesus was experiencing because they were defiling the house of god they were making it a business it was the temple of god is for prayer he said you're making the house of god you know, it's supposed to be a temple of prayer, and you're making it a market. This is not a flea market. This is not the market, uh, retail market. This is the house of God. And how many times can the church be mistaken to do so many things and sell so many things that it begins to mingle with that same attitude? You know, we got to be careful in Jesus' name. Amen. Luke 19, verse 41 through 44. Amen. Luke 19, verse 41 through 44. It says, As he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes that days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embarkment against you and circle you and hem you in one on every side they will dash you to the ground you and your children within your walls and they will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of god's coming to you you see that's why we need to be careful that we need to know god's timing we need to be sensitive in the spirit because through the uh, when we fail to value god's holiness when we reject God's holiness and His sovereignty, uh, His sovereignty, we begin to curse ourselves. We begin to bring judgment within ourselves, and we don't want that to happen. So we have to be very careful because not only are you gonna, as a parent, are gonna be responsible for your family, even your children can suffer. And right here it says. Right here it says on verse uh, towards the end, they will dash you to the ground, you and the children, and the children within your walls. You see, sometimes God brings judgment to the whole family, and we don't want that to happen. That's why, as parents, we have to be obedient to the things of the Lord. We have to seek His face and seek His will. You see, because He has given us our children to raise. And we are to raise them in the ways of the Lord. And so therefore we need to have holy indignation when, against things that are coming against God. Things that are against the kingdom of God. Things that God hates. Things that, that rep represent darkness instead of the light. We need to be disgusted with such acts. Because if we're not, then the judgment of God can come not only to our nation as a whole. Because people are just forgetting about god they're they're giving into the lust of their their of their soul and doing evil malicious things that are detestable they're just god just hates he despises the evilness that is being committed and we cannot allow to continue america to go in that way that's why it's so important that we take proper action and to where we 
begin to see through the eyes of God, where we begin to witness and judge according to God's will and say, wow, that is, wow, that, that is not acceptable in the eyes of God. And that we feel it in our inner being because we as God's children need to see that. We need to know that we're responsible, that, that whatever we do as a family, as parents, that it's, it can go into our children and our children can pick up whatever uh, sin that you are committing, your children can pick it up and they will begin to live a life as they grow older, they begin to live a life of that style. And therefore the sin of the parent also lingers to the sin of the children. And then it goes on and on. It becomes an iniquity. So therefore, we need to judge with righteous indignation. You don't hate the person. You don't just, you know, you don't hold anything against a person, but you just, you detest the evil act that has been done. That's what God is. God loves the person, but he detests the evilness that is in their heart, the sin that they create. That is the righteous indignation of our God, our Father. Amen. So, through his anger was directed at sinful behaviors and unmistakable injustice. However, we are also taught to be careful in our anger that we do not sin. You see, the word says that we can get angry. The word says, be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. And you can read that in Ephesians 4, uh, verse 26 through 27, that... It's okay to get angry, but don't let that anger consume you that you stay angry all night and all day and, and, and it just it, it breaks up the family unit. So God gives us permission to get angry, but don't sin in that anger. Don't hurt people in that anger. Don't uh, beat up a spouse. Don't beat up the children. Don't go around drinking and because you're upset. Don't do those kind of acts because it's only ruining you more. Amen. It's only bringing more damage to yourself. So in God, in his vision, in his view, he's looking down and he's saying, oh my God, you know, I detest what you're doing, but I'll forgive you if you repent. You see, God has given us the opportunity to repent and to turn around and, and begin to walk in the way of the Lord and where we detest those things that are sinful and that they come against the kingdom of God. They come against God and, and the way that He is because He is holy and He has called us to be holy. Amen? So a sign that you are growing in Christ, that you're maturing in the things of God, is righteous indignation. That is one of the signs because that means that you are more in connection with the Holy Spirit, with you're more in connection with the Father. And you are beginning to be renewed in the mind. You are renewing in the mind and you are beginning to walk a holy walk. And so when you see something that is detestable, something that is wrong and something that is sinful and it comes against the things of God, you are to feel that righteous indignation that is a sign of maturity in your christian life that is a sign of maturity that you do care that you are uh, you know renewing your mind because as a child of god we are supposed to renew our mind in christ jesus and if you're not renewing your mind then you don't care about what is happening you don't care that they take out the bible from the school uh, you don't care that they took prayer out of the school. You don't care that they took out the Merry Christmas out of the of the holidays. You know, uh, that is Jesus' birthday. That's why we celebrate Christmas, but yet you can't say Merry Christmas. You have to say Happy Holidays now. You know, it's crazy. It's crazy. And we should be angry about all the sin that is around us that we watch because that is a sign of the times that people are turning away from their faith. People are turning away from righteous living and they're beginning to engulf themselves in sin and enjoying the pleasures of the flesh that is totally leading them to death. You know, we should know better. We should know that as we walk in Christ Jesus and that we are becoming more like him, that is a sign that you are renewing your mind in Christ Jesus. That is a sign that you are past the beginning part. You're walking more in it than you are in the beginning. So that is a sign 
a righteous indignation is a sign of your relationship with Christ Jesus that it is more up there than down here below, right? So on a scale of 1 to 10, let's say, 1 to 10, your relationship with God as an overcomer is in 10, okay? You know, the day we die, we, we, we're, we came day in and day out, we're overcoming, we're overcoming, just like Jesus did, you know, he overcame the, the trials and tribulations of this world until he was, he was crucified and he resurrected, so let's say 10. A baby Christian is 1. Okay, are you following me? So then let's say you're in point number five, where in your walk with the Lord, you're maturing, you're developing, you're praying, you're reading the word, and uh, you're beginning to renew your mind in Christ Jesus. So you're walking with him, let's say level five. And then you begin to experience righteous indignation because the Christ in you hurts when you see something that is done that is evil before the Lord. Amen. You see that and you see something that is sinful, an act of injustice that is done against another person, another individual, or against the kingdom of God, and that hurts you and you rise up in anger. It's a holy indignation. Then you're on point. You are growing in the spirit. You are growing in your relationship with Christ Jesus. And you have begun to renew your mind. Because if you haven't renewed your mind, you're nothing, nothing what I'm saying is going to bother you. Because you're still dwelling from the carnal mind. You're still dwelling in the things of the world. There's no progress in you. So how does that happen? Well, you're not taking the kingdom of God seriously. You're not praying enough. You're not developing your relationship with the Lord enough to where you're renewing your mind to think as, as Christ. You're not renewing your mind enough to feel that, that, that pain because it is so sinful that it comes against God himself. Amen? That continuing to sin, it is a violation of God's holy name huh? and the goodness that motivate his anger against mankind. And since we fail to seek his space for deliverance, he is our creator. You know, we fail to seek God. We fail to look at him and pray to him. And we fail and to seek his face so that he can deliver us out of sorrow, all the misery that is around us. You know, it's painful. It's painful. So, should we check our attitude? Question mark. Should we check our attitude as well as our motives? They may be, you know, our motives and our, our attitude may be becoming angry with people, with people themselves. But remember, we're not supposed to get mad at people. We're supposed to get mad at their actions. You see, because God loves them just as much as he loves you. He doesn't like their actions. Like sometimes he doesn't like our actions that we don't, we don't behave. It's the same thing. But the only thing that is different is that they are lost in their sin and they need deliverance. They need, to be, they need to repent and come into the salvation of Jesus Christ. And that's where you and I come into the picture. When we see somebody that is, that is walking in sin and, and indulging in the, the things of the world and, and they're totally lost and we know they're damned to go to hell if they were to die, we need to uh, have the compassion of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are to, re to come to them and bring the word of, of the Lord and to befriend them and, and guide them and lead them into salvation. You know, it, that's, our, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Here, Paul gives us some sound advice on the appropriate approach. It says, do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. And that's in Romans 12, verse 19 through 21. You see, we are not to be judging the people. We're not to be condemning them. We're not to, to tell them, 
or to get them straight, no. We are to share with them the love of Jesus Christ. We are to tell them about the Lord. We are to tell them about salvation. We're supposed to tell them about eternal salvation, that if only they accept Jesus Christ. We're supposed to do all that. That's basic Christianity. Bible 101. That's what we're supposed to do. If we find somebody that is damned and we know they don't have the Lord in their, in their heart, our goal is to save them. We're, our, due to the righteous indignation that is within us, we're supposed to have that compassion for them. Just as God had compassion for us and Jesus loved the Father, that he was obedient unto the death. Amen. Hallelujah. So James also gives us good instructions when it comes to righteous indignation. He said, know this, my beloved brothers, let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of the man does not produce the righteousness of God. That's in James 1, 19 through 20. How many times do you see people lose their temper? They don't even listen to reasoning. They don't listen to anybody, you see. But here in James 1, 19, it says that every person should be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of the man does not produce the righteousness of God. You see, we don't want that to happen. And sometimes we might all fall into that, to that trap of the devil that we lose our patience or we get upset and we blow up. That can happen. But as we walk in our, in our way with the Lord, day in and day out, we're supposed to practice, practice, and have patience, and have patience, so that we don't blow up, that we can be uh, quick to hear and slow to anger, and listen, and listen to the other person, so that you can work things out and have peace between yourself and them. Amen? So the Apostle Paul echoes this advice, especially for those those times when we face those hostile, uh, when we, uh, for those that are hostile towards God and the things of God, amen. But even if you should suffer what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear their threats. Do not be frightened. But in your hearts, rever, 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 revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to anyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously, maliciously, I can't pronounce that word, against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. For it is better, it is God's will to suffer for doing good than for doing evil. That's in 1 Peter 3, 14 through 17. Amen. Now, I hope that you understand that um, righteous indignation is not against the person. It is against the sin. I want you to understand that righteous indignation grows as you have develop your relationship with God when you are renewing your mind in Christ Jesus. You see, because righteous indignation is a sign that your relationship, that you are actually, that you are renewing your mind that you are thinking more Christ-like, that you are walking in the things of the Lord. And when you see something like that happening, it will affect you, you see? So that is a sign of you growing and renewing yourself in Christ, amen? You're becoming more and more like God, amen? And the nature, and I'm not saying you're gonna be God, I'm, what I'm saying in the nature of holiness, because that's our mission, to become holy as he is holy. Amen? That's in the word. Eh? Hallelujah. So as believers, we can also channel our anger into constructive action by becoming more involved in Christian organizations. You know, there's a lot of Christian organizations that that fight things that are sinful in our country. You know, there's, uh, I belong to one, and they monitor the media. They monitor the media and they protest and they say we want we don't want that commercial showing because it's showing this it's an inappropriate so I I I I help them I do I sign petitions and things like that see that's how I do my part you know I participate in a, a Christian organization to help 
to stop influence of evil in our society. The key factor in all this is if our outrage results in bringing others into the loving and healing relationship with God, then it is righteous indignation, you know. Uh, if that's the result you get, righteous indignation should bring people into a loving and healing relationship with God. With God. Amen? Yes, it's okay. God allows us to get mad. He allows us to get upset. He allows us to... If we get angry, but the word says that in Ephesians 4, we read it, that if you get angry, not to stay angry. Don't go to bed angry, all right? You deal with it, and but of course, don't go crazy fighting, you know? Be slow to speak and slow to anger, amen? So how can we make changes within ourselves to improve and improve in godly thinking? You know, the answer is within our prayer time. The answer is... In Ephesians 4 23 7 and to be renewed all right this is a key that you get to the point where you begin to experience righteous indignation when you do this Ephesians 4 verse 23 through 27 it says and be renewed in the spirit of your mind that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness you see once you have started that journey Yes, Million Moms on Facebook, exactly. Uh, Deborah McKinney, um, yes, I do sign their petitions and so forth. I, I get their emails and it's one million moms. So I suggest that's one organization that you do, uh, that you can support in that way, amen. So Ephesians 4, 23, verse 27, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind and that you put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon the wrath, which is divine chastisement. Neither give place to the devil. You see, that's how, that's when you can begin to experience holy indignation yourself when you are renewing your mind in Christ Jesus because God is righteous and true holiness. Amen. Well, I pray that this um, teaching brought you some insight. You know, I didn't want to drag the teaching too long. I, I, I overdid my timing. I wanted to keep it simple, but uh, there was more to be said. So anyway, thank you for watching. And remember, Wednesday night is Bishop. Hey. Amen. <laughs> Wednesday night is Bishop. So join him Wednesday night at 730. And he's going to have an awesome teaching for you like he always does. Amen. So remember also Saturday is our Divas Fellowship at 11 o'clock a.m. And uh, we're going to have nachos. And we're going to have Mexican uh, food. So it's going to be nachos. Amen. It's going to be nachos a la carte. <laughs> <laughs> so I saw the menu today and I'm thinking like, wow, I'm already hungry. Amen. And uh, also, um, we're going to have our daughters. Um, we had, I had ordered a ba uh, baby shower cake for her baby shower, but due to the COVID, we never had it. So we're going to have the cake Saturday uh, during the meeting, ladies. So uh, invite a friend, invite somebody. This is, they don't have to be members of the church. But this is to unite in Christian fellowship. It doesn't matter if you're Catholic, Baptist, or Pentecostal. Come, join us. It's a time of fellowship and in unity in the spirit of Christ Jesus. Amen. So Saturday, this Saturday at 11 o'clock. And I please RSVP so we'll make sure we have enough food for everybody. So it's an awesome thing. It's going to be great. And I just... Can't wait to see all the lovely ladies because I miss the fellowship due to this COVID-19. You know, we've been missing out on our meetings and I miss having that fun. Amen. So let us pray. I'm going to go ahead and close um, this teaching with a prayer. So please join me. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you, Lord, that you are awesome, Father. And Lord, I thank you, Father, that you gave us your word, Father, to teach us, Lord, that uh, as, as we are renewing our mind, Father, as we renew, we are renewed in the spirit of your mind, Father, that 
we are putting on the new man which is after you lord which is creating in the righteousness righteousness and true holiness so father in the name of jesus father i thank you and i ask a blessing father i speak a blessing upon everybody that's watching this video father help them father lead them by your holy spirit lord and to renew in their mind father and to let them father experience that holy indignation in their lives as they renew their minds in christ jesus so father I bless them. Let this word, Father, create a harvest in, in the hearts of those that hear this word. Let it be released in the spirit. We release righteous indignation in the spirit to all that have an ear. Let them hear in the name of Jesus. And God's people say, amen, amen. Well, folks, have a good night. God bless you. Bye-bye.